Welcome to pharmacology. Because I'm happy. Da 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 da. This class will be about carrier molecules or transporters, and together with enzymes at the end. So as you can see here, we're going to cover the C and E of the rice for this particular flip classroom. Okay, so just a brief um, overview as back again. So this is R I C E in a way. So transporters basically they are they act like a person who pass on the parcel. So they get it from one side and bring it to the other side, right? So again, they can be inhibitors to it, and also false structure. Uh, false substrate and also enzymes which react in the same way. So you can see that the concepts which are uh, involved are relatively more straightforward, especially for the enzymes. So let's look at um, some detailed examples for the carrier molecules or transporter. So here we can look at, um, so remember please um, go through and pick your favorite one or two to memorize for this particular class. And obviously all the details you learn more and more towards the end and you should know all of this before you graduate anyway. Okay, so here we talk about noradrenaline transporter which is inhibited by cocaine. So this is actually a diagram <coughs> of the neurons. So here is actually the end of the neuron, which is actually it's also called nerve terminal. So this is neuron A and this is neuron B. So here they're trying to transport the signal from neuron A to neuron B. Right, so here um, in NE over here, it actually refers to norepinephrine, which again is another name, which is a similar similar meaning as noradrenaline. So what happens is that you can see that at this the end of this nerve, we actually have a storeroomish, meaning like a vesicle for this NE for ATP and P, which is the phosphate. So upon activation, it will cause the release of this contents into this synaptic cleft, which is what we call basically is the space between the two neurons. So in between here, you can see this NE, which is a norepinephrine, can actually float around in a limited way because there's obviously enzymes surrounding to try to break them down as well. So you can see that this NE can bind to its own receptors at this neuron B over here. So uh, just a very logical thinking, you would know that this NE, if the amount of NE release is higher, or the amount or the time that this NE can stay here would be longer. So the higher chances of this NE to is available to bind to the receptors and to cause a greater effect. So opposingly or adversely, in, a, in the other way, you can see that this NE, the time and the amount of NE here will determine how much activation would be at these receptors. Right? Make sense? So here this NET, which is actually the target that we're trying to talk about at this particular slide, which is the norepinephrine transporter. So this transporter, its function is actually like a mini recycling process actually, um, and also to limit the, the effect of NE of course. So what they do is you can actually bring this NE back to this neuron A, so that the time which is available here will be much shorter. So you can see this is actually a target for cocaine. I'm sure you know what cocaine is. Not go and find out. So you got tricyclic antidepressants here as well. So this compounds, what they do is they inhibit this NET. So it then causes prolong of this um, NE, the time and the amount of it, and the synaptic cleft of this receptors, wait, sorry, of these neurons, so that it will increase the stimulation of NE on these receptors. Cool? Again, more details of all this you'll learn sooner or later. Okay, the second one here is actually a proton pump. So this is actually a proton pump inhibitor. In this case, it's actually called pantoprazole. There's also omeprazole and all the prazole group. So what we do here is actually obviously in the gastric because it involves the proton. So in the gastric, it's an acidic environment. So acid comes from H+. So what they do is you can pump the H plus into the acid, into the, A, sorry, into the stomach. Right, so you can see here there's this H plus K plus ATP ACE pump. So one H plus goes into the lumen, one potassium will actually go back towards outside the cells. So what happens is that if you inhibit this pump, you reduce the H plus which can be secreted into the gastric lumen. So meaning there'll be lesser H plus in the stomach. So the acidity meaning it will be 
less acidic, right? Okay. The third and fourth example here is actually happening at the nephron, meaning at the kidney level. So at the kidney, as you know, the main function of the kidney is to cause reabsorption and of ions and water to control the amount which goes out of the body. Um, for normal physiological term, obviously it's also a main excretion route for a lot of other things such as drugs as well. So that here you can see there's a lot of co-transporter over here. So co-transporter meaning um, the ions can be transported together at the same direction into from one to the other side of the cells. So in this case it's from outside to inside of the cells. So there are two main groups here. What, uh, one is called tazites, another one is called loop diuretics. So both drugs cause an effect whereby um, you increase the water excretion out of the body. Right. So this tazites, what it does, it inhibits this sodium, chlor sodium slash chloride ion co-transporter. So less sodium will be reabsorbed. So this will again causes more sodium to be excreted. Hmm. Yep. So the second part here will be under loop diuretics. So this one again will um, it will inhibit another co-transporter. In this case, this is sodium plus slash two chloride minus slash potassium plus uh, potassium co-transporter. So this one will again causes reduce all the ion secretion back into the body. So the last part of this will be on enzymes. So enzymes is relatively really, really simple as because I believe you all learned so much about enzymes already. So there's a substrate and enzyme will convert it, convert it into something else or more than one product. So there's a lot of examples for enzymes. So there's a, a table here for this and the next slide. So go and Google up or go and find out more information about the substrate, the products and the enzyme, and the therapeutic usage based on the drugs here. So one of it is about aspirin. So aspirin, as you know, is a very, very famous drug. It's derived from, yeah, go and look out for it. It's actually from one of the plants. Right, so what it does is that it inhibits this cyclooxygenase enzyme. In short form, it's actually called COX, C-O-X. Right? So aspirin is a non-selective COX inhibitor because it inhibits both COX-1 and COX-2. So it's a very good drug um, for inflammation and also for heart disease in a way because it reduces the inlaymentum called stickiness of the blood. Right. So um, again, aspirin is just to bear in mind, aspirin is a very, very interesting drug because you can use it at two different doses. So you can have baby aspirin, which is about uh, 50 to 150 mg. Per day, use it every day. Uh, you can use it for prevention of heart diseases for those people who are in the, at the risk of getting it. And obviously, you can use it at a much higher dose, like 300 mg, for to reduce inflammation. So some other um, examples of drug we get: neostigmine, captopril, inalapril, or the pril family. Trimetoprim, simvastatin, sildenafil. <coughs> I think I mentioned in class before about this drug. So, acyclovir and sacrinavir. Go and look out for all the information and we'll discuss in the class. Thank you. Ta da.